Hey, this is Sam. Today I'm posting an older video I made about eight months ago on how to do your gel nails from home to save money from the nail salon. And it's an old video. I edited it a bit to cut out parts where I was talking too much. And I can tell that I'm not as comfortable on camera as I am now, which is still not comfortable. So it's not the best, but it is very clear on how to do your gel nails from home. And so if that's what you're looking to do, here is a very helpful video. And also everything is on brindlecoffee.com and below in the description box on how to get these items to do it all yourself. Today we're doing gel nails from home and I'm gonna go through each step of the process and I don't waste any time on YouTube. So I'm gonna tell you what you need, where you can get it, link those all below and fast forward through the parts where I'm just painting my nails. Or you can go to the blog and you can see step-by-step -step instructions written down so that you don't have to watch this video again. You can just read the blog if you forgot a part. The blog, by the way, is brindlecoffee.com. So in front of me on the table, I have acetone. Then you need some cotton balls. I have a package of nail file. You can see this is the one I was using. And then these are the buffers. So you can go straight across the top if you want to later. And then I have this box of soak off clips. These are amazing. They come in a bunch of different colors. I chose purple, but basically you're gonna get the cotton ball soaked in the acetone. And then you might have to break it to make it the size that you need first. Put it on your nail when it's all wet then you clip this on and it's in a square shape. So it's like the perfect way to go around your finger. These are amazing. Oh, I forgot. I actually have the cuticle pusher here too. So I don't have anything on my nails today. And that's why I don't need to do the soaking, but I had no trouble doing this. I've done this before. I can do it myself and I can have them on my whole hand. Okay. So everybody knows that with gel nail polish, it's really hard to get off. And sometimes when you're at the salon, they use that little drill to get off the top layer and they don't go to the bottom layer of the polish because that would drill on your finger nail. But you wanna have a coarse nail file so that if you have gel polish on, you can file, file, file and get some of the layers off. It'll make it way easier. So then you get a little bowl, one that you know you don't really care about eating out of because you're gonna pour acetone in the bowl. This bottle is new after one, I've used it once. And so see how much I used, that's it. That's all you have to pour in. So you pour in what you need, I'm pretending, and then you'll soak the cotton ball in it once you get it to the size of your finger. So if I soak these just a couple at a time, not all of them, um, then I can more easily put them on. If you put too much in, it might even evaporate. I didn't have that problem because like I said, I only used a little bit, but remember you can always pour more. You don't wanna waste it. Now I'm gonna bring in some more tools. So when you take off the soak off clips and you take off the cotton balls, you might use a cotton ball to scrub your nail a little bit, especially if you have flakes on there. Then I put a little towel down, just a little hand towel, bath, bathroom hand towel and you're, you're gonna put get flakes on it. So you want just something to catch them. You use the beautiful cuticle pusher, not just to push your cuticles, but also to push off the extra flakes that you've loosened now with the acetone. If you've seen your nail technician do this, they might have to, um, they might have an easier time. If you're having a hard time, you didn't do it long enough. Okay, you need to soak these for like seven to 10 minutes at least for me, mine tend to stay on really well. And my nail polish just sticks longer than other people's. So seven minutes minimum, 10 minutes if you're like me. As you get your gel polish off, you'll just wanna use your cuticle pusher to also push and shape your cuticles. Because after this, we have removed all of our gel polish and we're ready to start new. And that will include using the cuticle trimmer. Okay, so now we're ready to actually do the nails fresh. 
You had a towel or a paper towel to catch the flakes of the polish and catch any dripping acetone that you had, right? So you either shake it out or you have a new one, and place it on your surface. The next things that I have and need are my cuticle trimmer. Now, I don't even think that it's healthy to take all of your cuticles off anymore, even though that at least used to be a common practice in the salons that I went to. And now my cuticles tend to be pushed up. I do it myself just randomly. So I might just use the trimmer to get anything that feels loose or like really thick. Then I have my nail file and I, this is where I would end up doing the ends and you shape your nails on the end the way that you want. You also have the nail buffer. So you're prepping the surface to be um, ready to adhere to the bond and the foundation of the polish. Then I have these lovely gloves. These actually shield from UV rays. So you wear the gloves. I think they're one size fits all. This is my UV LED light and it comes in this little sleeve. It has a plug that's right over there. And basically it's a basic one. I tried to pick one that was inexpensive. They all kind of look the same. So you don't know which one to get. Now I basically chose one step up from the cheapest one and it is automatic. It just senses your hand and the countdown goes. Now to the actual painting, you need pH bond and I got the Jellish brand. I also got the Jellish brand of the next step, which we have the foundation. So it's the base coat. And then you would put your gel color on. We're gonna do red because it's about to be Valentine's Day. And then you would put on the top coat after that. So they come as a little set. You know, when it's over, you wanna make sure that any of the edges are done and make sure it's dry and everything. So you can use your cotton balls again with witch hazel or rubbing alcohol and that will get off any excess stuff. Then when it's all dry and you're done, you can put on your cuticle oil, which will make your nails shiny, but your cuticles really taken care of. And that's from OPI. If your nails are not wet anymore from being soaked in the acetone, then you might need another bowl or clear out that bowl and put warm water in the same bowl you had, and then you could soak your nails. I'm not eliminating my cuticles. I might be trimming them, so I don't really need to soak them as much as someone else might. So here I go, I'm just gonna trim one of my nails and then I'll shape the other ones with the file. This is where if I had something to trim, I would, but I don't. And I'm linking a pearlescent rainbowy colored ones, even though mine are so cute, I found the pearlescent ones later and I thought somebody's gonna love these. I wish I had them. Doing your nails from home can save you a ton of money if you normally get your nails done. Now, I used to get my nails done once a month because my gel polish would last me one month. And I went to the best nail technician I've had in my life. She is so detailed. She is so meticulous. She makes sure that everything is perfect and she is amazing. Now her gel manicures cost $35. I always give a 20% tip. So that's seven more dollars. That's $42. Now, okay, $42 a month times 12 is $504 in one year. So now with what I have, after I purchased all of this, I ended up saving myself $504 a year. The buffer will get out any large flakes that you filed and they're sort of attached to your nail. And then you have to go wash your nails after this. My hands are clean. I'm gonna put my gloves on now. The gelish pH bond is gonna help everything stick to the nail. So hence the word bond. I'm doing one hand at a time. Now you need to use the foundation and you need to dry it in the UV light. This should be thin. Try and use what you have, spread it around instead of getting more. Now it's time to apply the color. Remember, thin coats 
if your nail technician doesn't sweep the polish across the front of your nail, then they're doing it wrong. This changes my life because then it doesn't chip. You have to sweep across the nail just a little bit. You typically need to do two coats of polish, but I usually like to do a third because I like the deeper colors. Now we have the top coat that we need to put on. This is something you wanna dry for twice as long. Probably should have opened these before I started. Okay, everybody, I have done the first hand. Not bad, not bad, very shiny right now. I'm not gonna do the cuticle oil until the end when I have done the other hand. So repeat. Do not let the color get up on your cuticle because if it touches your skin, it's going to create sort of a pocket where it will peel up. You just want the color on your nail and nowhere else. Ta-da! Ooh, beautiful. If you feel like they're sticky, this is where you use the rubbing alcohol or the witch hazel so that you can uh, unstickify them. Still gonna be careful because I don't want, if you hit it hard, you know, if you hit it on something really firm, you could push the color. So cute. All right. And then you go. So now you know how to do your own gel nails at home. I hope this has helped. Ask me a question in the comment about how I apply the polish or anything else like that. And check out my blog, brindlecoffee.com, so you can see the step-by-step -step instruction and maybe not have to find the spot in the video. Bye. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions on how to do your nails the right way or what I've learned over time doing mine from home, please feel free to leave a comment and ask. Much love.